Don't try even once. Uno datura, Jimson weed. Imagine swallowing a single seed or taking a sip of tea brewed from a strange plant. Before long, the world around you warps grotesquely. Shadowy figures hover at the edge of vision. Insects seem to swarm across your skin. Objects twitch to life, and you can no longer tell what's real and what's not. That is the harrowing experience of Datura poisoning, a plant packed with tropane alkaloids that trigger powerful hallucinations, long likened to a living nightmare across many cultures. Datura, Datura stramonium, also known as Jimson weed, Datura or the witch's herb, appears in numerous ancient legends and rites. In medieval Europe, witches were said to use plants from the nightshade family like datura and mandrake to concoct flying ointments smeared on broomsticks to fly at Sabbaths, really a way to induce trance and visions. In India, datura is sacred to Shiva, yet it was also exploited by the Thuggy, a 19th century criminal sect who laced travelers' food with datura to stupefy them before robbery. In North America, the name Jimson Weed traces back to an episode in 1676 at Jamestown, Virginia. English soldiers suppressing Bacon's Rebellion boiled datura leaves as greens. The result was days of delirium for the entire detachment. According to historian Robert Beverly, for 11 days they became utterly deranged. One man blew feathers in the air. Another ran about naked giggling. Another rolled in his own filth without realizing it. When they finally recovered, none remembered what had happened. They had lived through a true nightmare. The principal compounds in Datura are escopolamine and atropine, anticholinergic alkaloids that paralyze and sedate. Even a small dose can cause dry mouth, dilated pupils, rapid heartbeat. A bit more brings on intense hallucinations, delirium, disorientation, and transient amnesia. Victims often stare wide-eyed while their minds wander deep into phantasm. Demons, blood, crawling insects. They may converse with people who don't exist, perform bizarre acts with no awareness, under Datura, the line between reality and illusion vanishes. This isn't an ordinary trip, but a living nightmare. Those seeking a novel trip typically end up dizzy, terrified, and in the ER. Severe intoxication can include seizures, coma, and death from respiratory failure or cardiac arrhythmia. The Jamestown episode of 1676 is a classic testament to Datura's menace. Healthy soldiers reduced to madness for 11 days. A tragic grotesque. In modern times, thrill-seeking youths in Southern California have occasionally brewed tea or smoked datura seeds for kicks, only to land in hospitals screaming in panic. Seeing blood run down the walls, friends turning into skeletons, the movie camera morphing into a dog's head. In 2008, a family of six in Maryland inadvertently cooked soup with datura leaves. Soon they were sprawled on the floor laughing uncontrollably, then dizzy and hallucinating. Luckily discovered in time and saved, Datura and its relatives are feared because the hallucinations they produce are unlike those of other psychoactives, while substances like LSD or psilocybin often leave users aware they're tripping. Datura's victims lose contact with reality outright, plunging into a vivid, uncontrollable delirium, and often remember nothing afterward. In that state, they may unwittingly harm themselves or others. Add the fact that Datura is easy to fatally overdose, and even seasoned users warn that even addicts should steer clear of Datura because the price can be your life or a horrifying memory that never fades. Two devil's breath, scopolamine. One night on the streets of Bogota, Colombia, you're chatting with a stranger. He offers you a cigarette or simply flicks a faint dust into your face. Minutes later, you're drifting in a fog, trailing after him, willingly handing over your wallet, opening your front door, even helping him load your own belongings into his car. The next morning, you wake up with your memory wiped clean, unable to fathom where you are or what happened. This nightmare comes from a drug nicknamed Devil's Breath, scopolamine, extracted from the local Borrachero plant. Scopolamine isn't unfamiliar in medicine. Since the early 20th century, it has been used, combined with morphine, as a twilight sleep anesthetic for childbirth and in low doses as a motion sickness patch. But scopolamine's dark side revealed itself early. In 1922, a Texas physician proposed it as a truth serum for interrogations, an idea that didn't pan out. In South America, especially Colombia, scopolamine derived from borrachero seeds is known in the street as borundanga, and it has circulated in criminal circles for decades. It became so famous that the press dubbed it Devil's Breath. The nickname stems from rumors that criminals can blow scopolamine powder into a victim's face or smear it on a business card. The victim inhales it and instantly loses will as if possessed. Whether a single puff can truly do this is debated, 
But the undeniable fact is that Colombia has seen thousands of crimes involving scopolamine to stupefy victims. According to the Wall Street Journal, in the 1990s, nearly half of ER cases in Bogota were linked to burundanga, scopolamine. The U.S. State Department has also warned travelers about being drugged, estimating around 50,000 cases a year tied to scopolamine. Scopolamine is a powerful anticholinergic. At small medical doses, it causes drowsiness, dry mouth, lightheadedness, but with higher doses or if swallowed, inhaled. It induces delirium. The victim becomes disoriented, paranoid, and, most notably, completely stripped of self-control. They may still walk and talk, but in a zombie state, doing whatever they're told without fear, without resistance. The truly frightening part is the amnesia afterward. Victims often remember nothing. Physiologically, the drug suppresses reflexes, dilates pupils, speeds the heart, raises temperature, dries the skin, and may cause extreme agitation or seizures. In very high doses, it can induce deep coma, depress respiration, and kill. Doctors warn that 24 hours of stupor is common among scopolamine victims in Colombia. Worse still, because victims don't scream or struggle, criminals can easily exploit them. Stories range from robbery and sexual assault to urban legends about organ trafficking, all tied to devil's breath. In Colombian urban folklore, scopolamine tales are everywhere. There are stories of foreign tourists charmed by a beautiful woman at a bar, waking up on the curb with nothing. One man emptied his home safe himself and handed everything to a stranger seeing him out like a guest, all caught on camera while the victim remembered nothing. In 2008, Paris police investigated a group of Chinese-origin suspects who allegedly used scopolamine to hypnotize and rob elderly people living alone. However embellished some accounts may be, there is a core of truth. Authorities in multiple countries confirm criminals slip scopolamine into drinks or sprinkle it onto food. Some experts doubt a single blown dose is sufficient. A significant inhaled amount would be needed. But virtually everyone agrees scopolamine is truly dangerous when spiked into beverages. Many victims have died from overdoses, either because criminals mixed it too strong or because the victim's body couldn't withstand it. Among all demon drugs, scopolamine, devil's breath, stands out for its ability to steal a person's will. While most drugs intoxicate, stimulate, or sedate, this one turns victims into puppets and they don't even realize it. The horror is total loss of control. You could hand your life over to a criminal and then forget everything. Socially, this zombie drug spreads fear and distrust. How do you trust a stranger if even a handshake might be a trap? Colombians say this devil powder is scarier than cyanide. At least cyanide kills you outright. Scopolamine makes you someone else first. The best defense against devil's breath is never accepting food or drink from strangers and staying vigilant. Because once you've inhaled that invisible dust, not even God may be able to save you. Trescarfentanil? There is a powder as tiny as a grain of salt that can kill you in minutes. And it isn't a nerve agent like polonium, but a synthetic opioid called carfentanil. If heroin is wine and fentanyl is hard liquor, then carfentanil is pure alcohol. Just one milligram of carfentanil, smaller than a grain of rice, can cause fatal overdoses in dozens of people. What's more, carfentanil has been weaponized as a chemical agent, causing a tragedy in which over 120 hostages died during the 2002 Moscow theater crisis. Carfentanil was synthesized in 1974, part of the fentanyl analog family. Its original purpose was unusual, a tranquilizer for elephants and other large animals. Indeed, carfentanil is about 10,000 times stronger than morphine and 100 times stronger than fentanyl. A tiny dart can bring down a multi-ton elephant. Because of its extreme toxicity, carfentanil is not approved for human use and is tightly controlled. Beginning around 2010, however, drug cartels, particularly in China, began illicitly producing carfentanil and related opioids to cut heroin or press into counterfeit pills. The goal, ramp up the high, carfentanil is staggering in potency, and cut costs a little goes a long way. The result was a wave of deaths. In 2016-2017, the U.S. and Canada recorded multiple mass overdoses before discovering the heroin supply had been laced with carfentanil. U.S. data show that among opioid fatalities in 2016, 389 cases tested positive for carfentanil. That figure is surely the tip of the iceberg. Many regions lacked testing for carfentanil until the late 2010s, so earlier deaths were likely misattributed to fentanyl or heroin. Internationally, as noted, Russian forces used an aerosol containing carfentanil during the Dubrovka theater hostage crisis, Moscow 2002. The gas incapacitated the terrorists, but more than 120 hostages also died because timely resuscitation was not provided. The incident shocked the world, and carfentanil has since been listed among banned chemical weapons under the Chemical Weapons Convention. 
You could say Carfentanil shares the honor of a blacklist alongside sarin and VX, even though it was born in a medical context. Carfentanil acts on mu opioid receptors in the brain, like morphine or heroin, producing powerful analgesia and CNS depression. In large doses, it can shut down breathing almost immediately by suppressing the respiratory center. Inhaling or skin contact with tiny amounts can be enough to poison, rare in practice with proper protective gear. But that possibility has made police extremely cautious when handling white powders. Overdose symptoms mirror other opioids, coma, slowed or stopped breathing, cyanosis, pinpoint pupils, but with much faster onset and a need for far more naloxone to revive. There are reports of paramedics spraying six or seven doses of naloxone just to pull one carfentanil patient back from the brink. Psychologically, carfentanil isn't a recreational drug per se, so there's little first-hand description of its high, but given its 100x fentanyl, a minuscule dose likely causes an overwhelming dissociation, dropping users into deep coma rather than the floaty euphoria of heroin. People using heroin tainted with carfentanil often die without realizing it, slumping over with the needle still in their arm, while friends nearby collapse in succession after sharing the same toxic supply. The late 2010s opioid crisis in the U.S. was fueled in part by carfentanil. In Ohio, the last six months of 2016 saw hundreds of deaths linked to it, prompting a public health emergency. In Canada, early 2017 brought an Alberta alert after 14 people died in a single day in Vancouver. Police labs in several jurisdictions were stunned to find that a bag of white powder presumed to be cocaine was actually carfentanil, meaning a few lines could kill crowds. In 2017, New Jersey authorities seized 0.25 kilon of pure carfentanil. Prosecutors argued, hyperbolically, that it was enough to kill 50 million people, underscoring how little is needed to be lethal. Back to Moscow, 2002. After special forces pumped the carfentanil-laden gas into the theater, scenes outside were ghastly, bodies piled up, while survivors lay comatose among the dead. Because Russia kept the gas formulation secret, hospitals didn't know which antidote to use. It took one ton two hours before doctors surmised an opioid and administered naloxone. Too late for many. Carfentanil represents the extreme end of opioids, terrifying power and quiet slaughter. Never before has a drug meant to induce pleasure also been a mass-killing chemical weapon. That pushes carfentanil beyond a typical street drug. Biologically, the thought that a trace exposure could be fatal is enough to unsettle the public. Authorities call carfentanil a serious threat to public safety because carfentanil-aced heroin can kill hundreds of users and bystanders. It has also raised fears of narco-terrorism. In 2017, U.S. media speculated about the devastation if terrorists mixed carfentanil into party drugs at a music festival. Fortunately, China moved to ban carfentanil exports in 2018, reducing supply to some extent. But the battle is far from over. Traffickers keep leapfrogging regulations with new compounds. After carfentanil came isodonidazine, 500x morphine, and even nidazine is stronger still. For now, carfentanil remains an emblem of dread, proof that humanity can devise a drug deadlier than poison itself. Trank xylazine. Lately on the streets of Philadelphia and New York, people have witnessed scenes straight out of a horror film. Individuals slumped over, half unconscious in broad daylight, their arms and legs marred by deep ulcers down to bone, the surrounding flesh blackened and rotting. This isn't crocodile making a comeback. It's a new drug on the scene called Trank. Xylazine, a veterinary sedative, mixed with fentanyl. It's being dubbed the next generation zombie drug in the US, spreading terror amid the modern opioid storm. Xylazine has been used since the 1960s as a sedative for horses and cattle to calm animals before surgery. It is not approved for humans due to dangerous side effects, hypotension, respiratory depression. In the early 2000s, drug dealers in Puerto Rico discovered that adding a little xylazine to heroin prolonged the high. Xylazine slows opioid metabolism. Thus, Trank Dope, a heroin fentanyl xylazine blend, was born. From 2010 onward, Trank Dope gradually spread onto the U.S. mainland, first in Kensington, Philadelphia, and then across East Coast cities. Today, xylazine shows up in over 10% of fentanyl deaths in the U.S., as of 2022, up nearly 300% from 2019. In 2023, the White House Office of National Drug Control Policy, ONDCP, designated xylazine a priority drug threat, the first time the U.S. government has formally warned about a non-opioid chemical within the opioid crisis, reflecting the severity of the problem. Pharmacologically, xylazine is a potent alpha-2 adrenergic agonist, 
In humans, injecting or inhaling xylazine can cause profound sedation, respiratory depression, bradycardia, and hypotension. In other words, it functions like a heavy anesthetic, dropping users on the spot into a fogged, semi-conscious state. On the street, people call this the trank nod because users often stand or sit swaying zombie-like. Xylazine outlasts fentanyl, so the combination feels longer-lasting, which is why it's popular. The horrific catch is that xylazine is not an opioid. So naloxone, the opioid antidote, doesn't reverse xylazine's effects. This means that in a fentanyl xylazine overdose, naloxone may revive the opioid portion. But xylazine can still leave victims unconscious and not breathing on their own. Many clinicians describe resuscitations where, after naloxone, the patient has a pulse yet remains unresponsive, requiring ventilation. Beyond immediate lethality, xylazine has a bizarre long-term effect. Widespread skin ulcers and tissue necrosis. Even where no injection occurred, spontaneous wounds can erupt. On arms, legs, even the face. These wounds are notoriously hard to heal, progressing to deep necrosis with black, malodorous, dead tissue, often ending in amputation without aggressive care. The mechanism isn't fully understood. Theories include severe peripheral vasoconstriction, plus prolonged immobility, leading to local ischemia and tissue death. Whatever the cause, countless fentanyl users in the U.S. now carry grotesque injuries, slowly becoming disabled. American media have been flooded with images from Kensington's so-called zombie land. You see people clustered on sidewalks, heads bowed, backs hunched, arms dangling, the posture of the walking dead. They remain motionless for hours, occasionally staggering a few steps before nodding off again. Up close, the wounds horrify. One person's kneecap exposed through a deep ulcer, another's fingers blackened with gangrene, a young woman with a hole eroded through her nose. Quick interviews reveal a refrain. Everything's got trank now. We don't want it, but it's already in the fentanyl. Kicking it is worse than kicking opiates. Clinic doctors say treating trank wounds is exceedingly difficult. Patients keep injecting, the wounds don't heal, and many require amputation to halt advancing necrosis. Rates of sepsis, infective endocarditis, and other severe infections have surged among trank users. One emblematic case, a 32-year-old woman in Pennsylvania dependent on fentanyl, developed leg ulcers after a few months on trank-tainted supply. Ashamed, she avoided the hospital. By the time she collapsed and was brought to the ER, both legs had bone infections, forcing bilateral above-knee amputations. Awakening to the loss, she was devastated, and yet after discharge, still sought trank-laced fentanyl trapped in the cycle. Stories like these are unfolding in the heart of modern America, echoing the crocodile nightmare of Russia years ago. Trank, xylazine, is considered terrifying because it bundles all the worst factors. Addiction, lethality, disfigurement, and it hides inside a widely used drug, fentanyl, that many cannot avoid. Unlike crocodile, where users knowingly take a dangerous brew, xylazine is stealth mixed into fentanyl, leaving users no real choice. Society's challenge is enormous. Naloxone, the life-saving weapon of the opioid era, is powerless against xylazine. First responders face unprecedented. Patients are pulled back from opioid overdose, yet remain deeply sedated by trank, needing ventilators and intensive care. Trank ulcers also strain the health system, prolonged treatment costs and epidemic risks, e.g. drug-resistant staff and strep spreading from open wounds. Viscerally, trank taps into a primal fear of the body decomposing while still alive, a true-to-life zombie horror. City blocks of The Walking Dead have jolted public consciousness. The drug crisis has mutated into a grotesque phase once reserved for horror films. Authorities are racing to respond, researching antidotes to xylazine and moving to regulate the chemical. Until solutions arrive, Trank remains the newest nightmare among humanity's scariest drugs. Remember, drugs can rob not only your life, but also your humanity and your soul. And that is the scariest loss of all.